How's everybody doing? Missed you. Mag, say hi. Hi. You didn't get Mags in the shot. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, this smells great. It is nothing but the best. Seriously. No, serious. I wish you everything but the best. I wish you everything but the best. <laughs> uh, missed you. Love you. How's everybody doing? Hallelujah. God bless. The eclipse yesterday changed my life. And if you didn't position yourself to see it, you are playing too much. That's, that's the takeaway. That's the takeaway. If you didn't make time, if you didn't carve time to watch the solar eclipse, then you are playing too much because it's a sign of the times. Can I tell you? <clears throat> there was an orange dot on the bottom of the sun. What was it? We don't know. Jupiter. That's what they were saying. I don't know. I don't know. I was a little nervous. People were saying it's aliens, and I was like, here it begins, probably. Um, but it was very bizarre. And I tried taking a video of it, um, but it didn't really like fully come through. So if you were a nerdle like me and the handful of people that I went with, we got glasses. Do, 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 do. I made a dish. Mine was better. You made a dish? The dish with the holes in it. Oh. You just puncture the, the paper We had plate. a col colander, so boom, roasted. And it actually did work. We saw did the, the glasses in. work? The glasses did work. Kind of. Well, how about I was like, you know what? I don't really need the glasses. I'm just going to look up every now and again. That was a mistake. Yeah, it was a mistake, yeah. I, I did it once purposefully and then probably five more times throughout the day okay. accidentally. Well, I told mom, I was like, you, you can kind of see it. Just look, take a quick look. And mom was like, mm. I'm like, all right, that's great. enough. That's great. But the kids didn't care. So I thought that was interesting. They didn't care because they don't, you didn't teach them. <laughs> that's, that's exactly <laughs> It's hot as hell. <laughs> it looks like it's been it's got it's, it looks like it's been sitting around for an hour. It's so molten. I, um, <laughs> it's molten lava. Literally, I should like let the air escape from this a little bit because I think my lips are swollen. What the heck? <laughs> when I took a sip, I did the same thing. I just played it off. It's just, I'm like, like looking at the top and there's condensation, so I'm like, this thing has been sitting here for. No, a No, I think it was. Look, there's still guys, steam coming I'm out of it. You this this. Uh, these guys, this works. These little cups or whatever. Look at that. Can you see the smoke? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that good was lord. So funny. I'm just gonna keep that open. <gasps> guys, sad day to, today. This morning we came back from a week off, and the fish are no more. I don't know if anybody knew that you had fish in your office, but they did it. They did it. We, I think it was Camila I don't know for her why birthday. You like just her tenth like birthday. They lasted a year. My flaws. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? They lasted a year, didn't they? They lasted more than a year. It's what are we now? Cam got like them. the blue one was the one, only one that lasted through because all the other ones are new, right? Because you had to no, replace the orange them one was actually the one that lasted through. The blue one was part of the new group. I see. So they, she had colorful like goldfish or whatever, mm. whatever they're called, and uh, I hated these fish. Glowfish. And so, yeah, we've been trying to kill them off, but there's nothing that you could do. <laughs> I wasn't trying to kill them off. <laughs> to kill them off. And then apparently one week away in Florida did the trick. So they gone. That tank can be now removed. And I'm never it out. And, and I'm never getting fish again. No doubt. It's just too high maintenance. It's just gross. I mean, I literally, like, I changed the filter and all that kind of stuff, and they still are gross. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, they're not meant to be. Actually, glowfish are like mutants, you know? They're not actual fish. They're just not. Hmm. I mean, they are, but they were lab-made. Gross. There's no natural, like, pink fish. I mean, there is, but, like, you know what I'm saying? They, they glow in the dark. It's no weird. thanks. Nobody send me fish. I want to repeat that. Nobody send me fish. Don't do it, because I will, I will throw them into our local pond. And then, and then we jeopardize 
the, the natural habitats. And, and who knows? You know, some, that glowfish could breed with some trout. And then you have, like, monster fish that just kill entire species of fish. So you just, let's avoid that. So I'm letting you know right now, don't send me any fish. I don't want them. It's too much. So back, how was your vacation? Great. You looked tan. Yep. This is just one day of laying out. That's all you need. That's all we need. You look toasty. You look like a toasted caramel. Toasted. You hungry? You've been talking about food. I'm like, this morning I woke up like wicked hungry. Yeah. All right, what are we okay. talking about today? We are talking about <clears throat> dirt today. Dirt. Dirt. We're talking about dirt. We're talking about the importance of dirt. Um, and Oh, I know what you mean. Soil. Soil. Dirt. Yep. Uh, because I want to just quickly emphasize. Do we have a timer? Can I get a timer over here? Uh, I want to uh, quickly emphasize that the word of God works. The word of God works. The word of God, give me 30 minutes on the clock. Uh, the word of God works every single time. And if it doesn't work, then there's a problem with the dirt. That's all. Okay, so like, again, you guys know I love flowers. I love it. I love gardens. I love um trees i'm i'm obsessed okay i love it okay but what i have understood being in that realm that 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 sphere of botany is that the soil matters like it really really matters back where we live in massachusetts uh there's uh it, in our yard there's soil on our front lawn but it doesn't look like soil. It looks like dust. It looks, there's gravel in it. It's grayish. Yes. And what we found is that we lived right next to a, um, a swamp. You know, it's like right in front of the swamp. And that swamp has grubs. Like it, it just produces grubs, like a, a particular grub for whatever reason. And these grubs, what they are really good at is uh, poisoning your dirt. Okay, so they'll eat the dirt, you know, they'll take everything out and then they just kind of like, um, they just kill the dirt. They're not good for grass. They're not good for, you know, anything that you want to yield fruit, okay? Uh, so what happens? I was potting some, some plants at home and I knew I can't do it in this kind of soil. So what do I do? I have to replace the oil or, or the soil. And so the moment I replace the soil is the moment that everything changed. Those trees are still there to this day. Those bushes are still there. I remember it was 2004 that I planted those bushes there, and they're still at that house in Framingham, Massachusetts. So soil matters. And a lot of times when, um, you know, we, we talk to people, they, they talk as though the word of God doesn't work. And there's, you know, different circumstances, different excuses, different reasons why the word of God doesn't work. And none of them matter <laughs> because the word of God always works. The Bible says that the word of God is an incorruptible seed. And I want you to really understand what a seed is. Seed in and of itself, cannot do anything. It cannot produce anything. It cannot, in and of itself, bear forth any kind of fruit. Did you know that in like um, uh, tombs that they found in Egypt and stuff, there has been seeds in there laying dormant 4,000 years, 3,000 years. And because they're there, buried with the dead, did it produce fruit? Did it produce anything? The answer is no. Why? Because it was not in soil. It was not. The earth, the earth, the, the, the soil, the dirt has a major impact. Actually, I want you to turn with me to Genesis 1, 11. Okay? And I want you to see this with a little bit more clarity. Okay? 
Because this is the importance of dirt. And then we're going to read Mark 4. Uh, and it says in Genesis 1, 11, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass. Let the earth, let the dirt bring in, not the seed. Let the earth, let the dirt produce. Yeah. So the, the el triki triki is found in the earth. That's where everything happens. That's where the magic happens. Where you don't want to be, where you're trying to avoid the dirt. It's dirty. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There's bugs. There's this and this. But it's actually life. There's life in the dirt. We came from dirt. That's what the Bible says, is that he took ground, like he took dirt from the ground, and he, he fashioned us into being. And as we were fashioned, the moment we die, we go back into the soil. We're fertilizer again. That's the cycle of life. That's the cycle of, of humanity, of nature. Anything in nature comes from the ground and then goes back to the ground eventually. So the ticket is that the earth is the one that... So the earth, when we talk... Now, now go with me and let me just uh, read, read the rest of it. Uh, then God said, let... That's a Berean version. Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed... And the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Seeds that produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. So the seed is actually the DNA. But if you don't have something to, to like a catalyst for that seed to produce, that remains dormant. It remains useless. It remains just in its seed form. So yes, even with a woman, I have everything it takes to produce a baby. But if there's no seed, there is never going to be a baby. There's no magic about it. That's just the way we were created. A man does not have what I have to produce a baby, so not, no kind of life form can come from a man. But God made it so that we have what it takes to produce life within us, a child. But first, there needs to be a seed. And so once we understand, we have everything. See, I have what it takes to, to, to bear a child. What I need is the seed. And then when the seed and the dirt collide, all of a sudden, something beautiful happens life happens and the word of God is the seed that we need to produce life and most of the time people do not blame the ground they don't blame the dirt they blame the seed but the seed has everything it takes to produce life so really it's not the dirt's fault it's the fat, or it's not the, uh, the seed's fault. It's the dirt. And, and, and if you, you uh, I, I went to a class and they gave you like these little samples of dirt, right? And, and then you buy dirt, like the real good stuff, the real high, high end stuff. And you've got, it has like white speckles and it's got like, you know, it's rich. It's almost black in density. It has a very strong smell. And like anything takes, like you know, like the moment I put a seed in this soil, it's going to be a matter of hours before that seed takes and boom, it's done. I mean, you put a, a, a bean in a, in, a, in a little clear Dixie cup or whatever it is, and you see that thing manifest almost immediately. It is unbelievable what, what, what quality dirt does to a seed. But then you have like the, the sandy stuff with the rocks, and you realize if I put a seed in here, it's probably not going to germinate. Yeah. There is no moisture. There is no, no nutrients. There is nothing here that this seed is going to be able to take a hold of, really. So what do you do? You change the soil. You have to change the soil in order for the seed to work. And when we go to Mark, turn with me to the, the book of Mark. And I hope this sets you free. Because I am so fed up with people blaming God and people th saying to and convincing themselves <laughs> that the word of God doesn't work 
because of your dumb circumstances. I tried tithing and it doesn't work for me. I am still broke. I still don't have a job. See, they don't realize that it is the dirt. You know, the word of God is the seed and our hearts are the dirt. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but Mark 4 is going to get into it a little bit. And I'm going to start in verse 3. Go for it. Listen, this is um, the Amplified. Listen, a sower went out to sow seed. And as he was sowing, some seed fell by the road. And the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocks where there was not much soil. And immediately a plant sprang up because the soil had no depth. And when the sun came up, The plant was scorched, and because it had no root, it dried up and withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seed fell into good soil, and as the plants grew and increased, they yielded a crop and produced 30, 60, and 100 times as much as been sown. And he said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear and heed to my words. Ah, yeah, you could have timed that better. Mm-hmm. Do you want me to keep going? I had it timed, but then, like, I had a second piece. I shouldn't have had the second piece. You shouldn't have. You shouldn't have. Um, everything about that passage has to do with the seed, which is the word of God, and the ground, which is a person's heart which is the seat of your authority. That's the true, who you are, who you are as a person, what you allow to come in and take root because the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Guard your heart because from it flow all of the issues of life, not just some of the issues, every single one. So when you are producing negative things, if you are producing bad things, please don't look on the outside. I want you to start digging deep and seeing what have I allowed to germinate in my heart so that these things are now what I am producing. If I am angry, if I am fearful, if I am sad, if I'm depressed, if I'm broke, if I'm in failure, if I'm whatever, fill it in with whatever, I want you to know that there is something that you allowed to permeate in your heart and it germinated and now there is a bountiful harvest of things that you have to eat of. And that didn't come from the hand of God. That doesn't come from somebody that offended you. That doesn't come from your pastors. It didn't come from your experiences or your circumstances. And that should be the best news ever. Because if you are a byproduct of your circumstances, then wake up and come to the realization that it doesn't have to stay that way. It's interesting to me that the word of God works in every situation. And for the people that say it doesn't work, it's because it's because they've they've allowed to believe something outside of the word of God to be their reality in their heart. That's what they believe. And then they're going to see and and reap a, a harvest of it. That's that's what's taking place there. But if you really understand these principles then it's, it's me. I have to change. I have to allow God to do his work on the inside of me. I have to allow my heart to trust God. Maybe that's what it is for a, a lot of us, is the inability to really trust God to come through for us. And, and, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, it does matter. It matters. What you believe matters. And look at this. Some seed fell on a footpath and the birds came to eat it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. That's the stuff that just, uh, okay. So some seed that you've placed hasn't even penetrated your heart. It's just something you might even quote it. By his stripes we are healed. You've never allowed that to really germinate in your heart and then uh, uh, absorb it and then find nutrition in it 
so that it's maintaining a level of sanity in your brain because you think you're going to die of cancer, you got to allow the word of God to come in and do its work. And what does that take on our behalf? Meditation. You have to meditate on the word of God. You have to do your part to continually uh, uh, have the word of God come alive on the inside of you so that it can change you. Until you do that, it's just a seed that's a superficial, and the moment there's a problem, the birds will eat it. I know that this has nothing to do with anything, but um, it just made me laugh because... In the beginning of this chapter, it reads, and Jesus began to teach beside the Sea of Galilee and a very large crowd gathered around him. So he got into the boat and he started teaching many things, including this parable that we're talking about. And then, <laughs> and so then he says it and everybody's like, wow, that was really good. The disciples like, amen, that's good, brother. And then it continues on and it says, <laughs> as soon as he was alone, <laughs> yeah. Those who were around him, they're like, "What did together?" The disciples what began asking him, "What did what, that mean?" What the H was that? <laughs> they were trying to play it off. Like, they were like, "Get it." That's my master. Mm -hmm. And He's you know smart. what? That and they had no idea what the H he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so he had to. In a way, he was so frustrated. <laughs> is also a, a heart, like a work of the heart. They and he was so frustrated to understand. Oh, and no, and no doubt. had pride to no, be like, no you doubt. Know, but at least they were humble enough to ask. Isn't that funny? <coughs> so he was like, and then he said, do you not understand this parable? How will you understand and grasp the meaning of all parables? Yeah, he was frustrated. Yeah, he's so he's like, you freaking dumb. <laughs> but you do, you need to break it down. Because even the bird, the, 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 so break it down to the first soil where the bird um, eats the seed. Yeah. The, the, That's the, a representation. The, the seed just was plopped it did not even come in but then the bird is a but the bird is the, is the enemy, the enemy. Satan. so any or a problem anything well, any what does that any look like in today in in today's life it's like if if i told you by his stripes you were healed and you say oh i take it by his stripes and, I, and you're just like mentally assenting is is where that comes from mm -hmm. there's a mental assent and then there's a heart understanding and they're not even on the same planet. So it's just like the the in like the introductory to the to the it's, word. It's the hearing without it actually meaning anything. And then here. the bird comes in and steals it. It's like roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet, and so are you. That doesn't mean jack to me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean anything to me. It's just a poem. Do you know? But if I if I allowed it and I started thinking like the roses that are red represents life. Like all of a sudden I'm just meditating on it. And what, what is the true meaning of roses are red and violets are blue? Mm -hmm. and, and, and like I could give it significance and I could put a name or an image behind it. And all of a sudden that poem is not just a poem that I'm reciting. It has meaning to it. It's special. Some, somebody might have tattooed it because it was what their grandmother told them. And now they, 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 they're like, there's a hard attachment to that stupid poem mm -hmm. where for me it's roses are red. I learned this in second grade. So, and so it's up here. It doesn't stay here. It's when we're talking poetry. about the, 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 the enemy see, stealing the seed, there isn't a tangible enemy that comes and takes the word of God. It could be you. your circumstances. It could be an enemy. It's just a voice. It, it's a, it could be a voice. But it's, it's not enough for your heart to have received anything. So, so you might be, as well it have it like, open you know, in the air. Oh, we, you know, uh, in church today, I learned about prosperity and tithing and then you going back home and then your best friend being like none of that works and would that would be a that would be that would be or your own own bias where it was like i know that the word of god says it. how many people have actually said i know the word of god says this but i don't believe it that's that's what i'm talking about i know the word of god says to not murder but i still believe that a woman has a choice right okay so so like the word of god is here and it has never like penetrated your heart to even for you to meditate on it and it to like really mean something to you. And when it comes to by his stripes, we are healed. How many people can recite that, mm -hmm. but they can't see themselves out of that situation. Right. 
So it's all just a mind thing. It's not a heart thing. Yeah, because even even for people, when we ask them, how many people know that Jesus heals everybody? Raises everybody their, knows. their hands. That's right. But how many people know that Jesus will heal you? And they're that's like, well, where they're like, well, yeah. you don't know me. Yeah. Okay. I used to do drugs. Yeah. So you know, I like it's all it's all of that. It's all of them. So yep. That will play a, a, a part in that. And uh, if you don't allow it to 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 come into your heart. That's what that seed looks like. And, um, and, and, and it's the, okay, Psalm 19, 14 says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. It says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my firm, immovable rock, and my redeemer. Okay, so the words that you speak are coming from a heart that meditates. What are you meditating on? Mm -hmm. And so if, it's, if you're not meditating on anything, then the seed is just going to be right on top of the soil. But that's the, that's the importance of like reading it. your word all of the time. Because it does create a depth. That's how you. That's how you change your soil. See, like, and and but people don't like discipline. That's all that is. Because then the even the Bible. I mean, the the Jesus calls them superficial. So, in similar way, the second group are the ones whom the seed was sown on rocky ground. Who that when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy, praise God, but accept it only superficially. Superficially. And they have no real root in themselves. Isn't that a powerful version? Yes. God. Because it's about you. It's not they don't have a, a root in the word of God. It's you don't identify with who you, you have, are. You don't have any depth. No. Because the word of God is a mirror. So when you're looking at the word, you're looking at you. So if you have a problem accepting anything in the mirror, you don't really understand who you are. The, they, they, they coexist. Who you are found in the scripture and what you believe and what surrounds you currently is a byproduct of how much of that you believe is for you. Mm. So when it comes to Mark 4, it says that it was shallow, but there were rocks. Mm -hmm. So there's impediments there. There's things that will block you. So you might now, with the, using the same scripture, by his stripes you were healed. And you might have put your hand up and said, you know what? God does heal. But will he heal me? All of a sudden you could say, yeah, I, th I think he could heal me. But what's the impediment? But my, my Aunt Susie, she died of the, the breast cancer that they just diagnosed me with. So it could be unbelief. It could be something that you saw because really when we, <clears throat> when we are walking by faith, we have to disregard sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Most of the impediments in your soil have to do with what you see, what you feel, what you've heard. Well, uh, continuing on verse 17, Jesus says, and they have no real root in themselves, so they endure for a little while. Then when trouble or persecution comes... Because of the word, immediately they are, this is the impediment, they are offended and displeased at being associated with me. Offense, offense, a hundred times. Because sometimes when I, like I talk about fear or depression and stuff and people are going through that in their families, they get mad offended. Mm -hmm. Like how could you say that I'd, I won't have to put up with this? How can you say that? Yeah. It's, a, it's something that we are, are destined to cope with our entire lives. And you saying the opposite offends me because of the nature of my upbringing and how we're still walking this out. Yeah. And it's a, it's a reality for most people Rocky's that story. anxiety and depression are something that's just a byproduct of the family genes. Mm -hmm. And they believed it. Rocky ass soil. Did you just say rocky ass soil? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I did. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. So there's that. And then the seed sprouted quickly. Yes. Because the soil was shallow, but the plant soon wilted under the hot sun. And since it didn't have deep roots, it died. 
So tell me again that this is a seed problem. It's not. Mm -hmm. The seed is the word. Right. Like literally the seed is the, 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 the uh, DNA that says apple. Mm -hmm. I wish people would look at seed as like just words. Like actual apples. Right. Sure. It's, there's, a, there's a word in there that says apple. Mm -hmm. So if I take an apple plant, I'm not expecting to grow up uh, any oranges, right? Because the DNA of that apple says apples. Mm -hmm. So if I expect watermelons, I'm an idiot. But that and and most of the time, that's what we 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 expect. There's like you, we they, we feel as though the problem is the seed. The problem is never the seed. And then the Bible goes to such a beautiful uh, you know extreme, and it's not even an extreme; it's a reality that the the word of God is incorruptible seed. Mm -hmm. So there's seeds that just don't take. Because of their damage or they've been uh, hurt, maybe under extreme heat or cold, and, and they're zapped and the, the seed remains dead. But the word of God never is corrupted. Amen. It's incorruptible seed. So whatever we want, whatever seed, whatever word you find in the, in, in the word of God, we plant that into our hearts. And if there's no impediments, if there's no, uh, uh, you know, crap in the soil that shouldn't be there, that word is 100% going to work for you. That's why the Bible says the word of God never returns void. The seed you might as well look at it at any time there's a, the word, you should just replace it. Every time you read it this, uh, this afternoon or where, wherever, if you say the word of God, the, the seed of God, it is the seed that will never come back without it producing what it's sent to produce. If God said that you're healed, it's going to come back with that, that you're healed. If God says that you're blessed, you're, it, that seed has gone forth. Now it's going to come back and it's going to produce my harvest of wealth and riches. Now, when I, I, I take that seed and, and I, uh, you know, what peace, peace is going to come back to me, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Because that seed never comes back. Oh, if I'm going to sow a seed of peace, it doesn't come back to me as chaos and fear. That's, that's ridiculous. An apple uh, uh, seed will only produce apples. Orange seed, only oranges. If I sow a seed of peace, if I sow a seed of money, if I sow a watch, it comes back. A watch. How many watches have, have I been given? I have lost count. Mm -hmm. How many have I get given away? I have lost count. Because that seed comes back after its kind. Amen. And then it says... Other seed fell among the thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Most of the time, and, and, and according, like not in this in this realm, what you have is a, a bit of confusion, or or there's other things that are planted with the word of God that you weren't diligent enough to uproot. And uh, what, what does that look like? Worry. Again, huh? Worry. W with, with the uh, thing of um, by his stripes we were healed. We could continue to believe that, but then worry comes in. Or we could continue to believe that, but we put just as much emphasis on the diagnosis mm -hmm. and, and the byproducts of what's happening with all of these symptoms. And so you could try to... Believe that you are fully healed, but the information that you so saturated your heart with will choke out fear, faith, worry, fear, anxiety. That's it. That's, that's basically the only thing that can choke it out because if you really think about it, if it's good, proper soil, you can screw it up with, fair, uh, with fear. So it's like... Um, and that's where the double-mindedness comes into play. Yeah, just go all in. And, and actually, I was in prison, and someone said, what does double-minded mean? And I thought, this is so refreshing, because <laughs> they don't even wow. know what double-minded means. Yeah. And it's having a double mind. It's, having, it's, it's, it's speaking from both sides of your mouth. It's saying, I'm rich, and then I'm poor. It's saying, I'm healed, but I'm sick. Yeah. You can't have it both ways, and most people will try. Mm -hmm. 
Most people will try to say that I'm prosperous, but then they'll say, I don't have a place to stay. Do you think you can find somebody that can like help me? Because I don't have money for that. It's, 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 you're talking out of both, both sides and of typically mouth. people have especially christians have it down to a science where they're in front of their christian friends or in church they they'll have it, it right a certain they'll way. say it right and then in their hidden time dude we see it too we see it all the time we we get you on an off day or whatever the case and all of a sudden it's a completely different human being 100 percent. and you're thinking like Ugh? yeah like, she would say that right. yeah that's crazy mm -hmm. that's crazy that that would come out of her mouth no doubt how can she say she's doing this when, uh, 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 like, uh, oh, we are, it's just like saying, like, by his stripes I was healed, and then you going home and saying, like, this headache is killing me, and I just can't. I can't go out anywhere. It's like, wait, but you said by his stripes you were healed. So if you're going to, like, say that, then you might as well cater to that, what, to, to what it is that you said, and make sure that everything moves in that trajectory. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So even if you do feel like crap, you're going to go out anyway because you're going to side with the by his types, uh, I was healed. And that's the, that's the thing with, uh, you know, humanity, Christianity in general. It's like you believe something, but then you don't, you don't believe it because of what you do and what you say behind closed doors. So you're, you're, you're double-minded. And so both both plants are, are growing, but the Bible, unfortunately for us, and fortunately, the Bible says that, you know, let that person not expect to receive anything from God. So that means I cannot produce if there's fear, doubt, worry, anxiety in the same place as what I'm trying to believe God for, my breakthrough, my healing, my prosperity. I can't, I can't, they cannot cohabitate. You have to be one-sided when it comes to the word of God. Not sometimes, every single time. Still other seed, the Bible says, fell on fertile soil. Other seed fell into good soil, the Amplified says. And as the plant grew and increased, they yielded a crop and produced 30, 60, and 100 times as much as had been sown. And he says, he who has ears, let him listen. See, because a lot of times you could be, how many people are at church on Sunday morning and they have ears, but they're not listening? Mm -hmm. They're on their phone. I'm listening. Oh, yeah, no. Like, I, 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 I put Jonathan in a quandary every single time. Because I'll be talking to him and I say, what, what did I just say? What did I just say? You've been looking at your phone the whole time. What did wow. I just say? And he'll give me the cliff notes. And I was like, but what's the point of that? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> Why did I tell you that? Because I, I was telling you something, but you disregarded that. You, didn't, you, you, just, you just took the little bits and pieces. That's not really what happened. Do you know what I'm saying? So Jesus was like, let he who, who has ears, let him, let him listen. Mm -hmm. There's an emphasis on you inclining your ear to listen to the voice of God. And so here, that one seed produced, produced 30, 60, you know. and 100 times. 30, 60, and 100 times of what had been sown. Look at the power of good soil. Not crappy soil, not bitter soil, not shallow soil, not dirty dirt, sand, uh, gravelly dirt. Good soil. It doesn't even say perfect soil. It just says good. It just says fertile. I'm good. That's it. Mm -hmm. Do you know there's a Chinese bamboo tree that takes five years to grow? And during the first four years of it, it barely grows at all. It grows like a leaf or two. First four years. Um, and it just seems like nothing's happening for four years. Um, and then on the fifth year, it shoots up as much as 80 feet Dang. in just six weeks. 80 feet. In just six, but when you look at it, they're like, oh my gosh, look at that. That bamboo tree shot up 80 feet. 
Dang. In just six weeks. That's crazy. It, it wasn't six weeks. It was right. four years. Right. It, it was five years and six weeks. Yeah. And see, that's what most people, do, like, they, they're not steadfast enough to stay with it. And that's where the test comes. Yeah. That's where the, 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 the production is at, where the production's at. Are you going to be faithful to believe it for six weeks, mm -hmm. for six years? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you're going to get tried. You're going to get tempted to, to say something the opposite of what has been planted. But if it's good seed or if it's good soil, then you'll outproduce the bunch. The Bible says 30, 60, and 100 times. And that is, is, is far better, you know, if, if it takes me five years to be in this situation. And, like, our lives ha have been a representation of, of that, that we never gave up. For so long, we had been preaching about prosperity with hardly any money in the bank account. Yeah. We would go to Michael's, and we'd be like, we, and we would never say we can't afford that. Right. We would say, we're coming back for you. Michael's? Michael's. We're going to come back for you. We're going to go to the clearance rack <laughs> because this is the reality right now. But I'm not going to poo-poo on the fact that I'm at the clearance rack. Michael's. Do you know what I'm saying? So it, it, everything you say, like everything you say is a byproduct of your heart. And, and, and if it's good, then you never say anything contrary to the word of God. You're, uh, I want to say the B word. You're, uh, you're complaining and your excuses. Female dog? Huh? Female dog? Oh, complaining. Oh, I see. Yeah. You know, you know, you you are. Uh, it's it's. You could tell that the the root the 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 ground needs help. Yeah, no doubt. You need a dirt transplant because right now your heart is not at the state uh, at the state where anything can be produced Yuck. with the crap that's coming out of your mouth. Yuck. With your attitude. Yuck. What you, who you are, that's, that's, that's just who you are. Who you are in here, that's, that's who you are. And it's interesting to me that all you got to do is let people talk, and then you see who they really are. You identify what's really in their heart. That's so true. So if somebody's guilty, they talk a lot. It's just, it's just, it's just they're different patterns, and they're not at peace. They're not at rest. There's something to that, mm -hmm. Max. But that just comes from a heart, soil that needs nutrients. That's right. Where can I find the water to soften up my soil? Mm -hmm. Where can I find the nourishment to bring forth a harvest of, of, that, uh, of that seed? Right. Yeah. Boom, boom. It's like into water. Gang, gang. It's like into water. Like into medicine? Medicine, nourishment. It's like into bread, food? You're going to need that. You're going to need compost. Look at the sound of my face. Like into poop, but... Uh, you know, but it's, 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 it's food. It's, it's the necessary means to make sure that you are changing your heart. And really what people don't understand is that your discipline in the word of God, your diligence in seeking God. And that's why the Bible says those, only those that are hungry and thirsty are going to be able to, to, to see the righteousness of God and fulfill everything he wants for their life. you got to stay hungry. Yeah. you got to stay thirsty for the things of God. It's the people that really desire to be in the anointing. The people, the people that just like take it a, a cutesy thing and, and show up once every Sunday morning in a blue moon because they've got better things to do. Those, those aren't hungry people. Those aren't committed people, and their soil is probably rotten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you got to stay with it. Well, it's not about how much services you're to. No, but it does help. It sure helps. Reading the word every single day. I'll tell you, I don't like the gym, but if I was to go to the gym every single day, which soon, in Jesus' name, we're going to do that, uh, you're going to start seeing me a little bit more cut. 
There's not no, there's no cut here. There's really not. But if I was to go every single day, as much as I hated it and as much as I didn't like it, if I was disciplined enough to get in it every single day, I would have crazy arm muscles. Why? Just discipline. Something begins to change. So if you are going to do your due diligence in, in, in being hungry and staying hungry and getting around the anointing and being around services, it's going to change. Your, your, the outcome of, uh, of what's happening around you has to change. I've already talked to so many people that started coming to our church. And because they started coming to our church on a regular basis, everything has changed. Their marriage has changed. Their, their children, they have changed. Things have changed. Their finances have changed. They have been so blessed just because they started coming to this church. Why? Because it's, it's, it's a seed. We are, are, are doing our due diligence and making sure, uh, you know, we are, we're keeping the, 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 the grass fresh so that the sheep can eat it. If I'm going to, if Jonathan and I are providing grass for the sheep, they're going to find nourishment in it. And then all of a sudden their hearts are, are just great fertile soil that when they want to activate something found in the word of God, it works. It takes and that's usually what happens when people come to this church. It's like, I've been trying to, I've been struggling with this thing for so long. And all of a sudden, it took. Why? Why? What changed? The soil changed. We just were swapping it slowly, whether you knew it or not. We're, 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 we're taking out the, the impediments. We're taking the rocks. We're taking the dead soil, the sand, the silt, the crust, all of that, the, the, the grubs. We're getting rid of all of those, uh, that, that junky soil, and we're transplanting it with black, beautiful, fertile soil so that you can make it work for yourself. So if you want to be filled with the goodness of God, stay hungry. Stay hungry. <sighs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every person that's listening to this or watching this. And I pray for a transplant. I don't even know if I could pray that, but I'm praying that. Yes. I pray for a soil transplant. Everything in their hearts that is stubborn, that is of pride, that is of, of, of fear and worry and doubt, I command it to be removed. And in its stead, Father, good soil. Come and fill the hearts of those that are listening and watching this podcast in the mighty name of Jesus. Transfer that out of their lives so that they could produce a harvest 30, 60, and 100 fold of what your word claims that, uh, uh, to, to be ours. Healing, prosperity, joy, peace, all of it. We want it all. And I thank you that from this moment forward, it's good ground in Jesus' name. If you are watching this for the very first time, I want you to let me know. And I am on social media, Adala Shuttlesworth, Mags is on there, Magalis, Love, right? Yes. Um, and we're on X, but I hardly get on X because it bores me. Um, and just let us know that you are watching, tag us, and we'd love to hear from you.